Help support Name Explain by liking this video, leaving a comment, and subscribing to the channel. Names are one of the most defining features about us. In fact, it could be argued that once you are dead and buried, you are little more than just a name. And long after your death, it will be that name that's talked about by ancestors and others for years to come. Fundamentally, your name is you. But say if that was to disappear, and for one reason or another, your name was lost, and you were left nameless, well then a new name would be given to you. John or Jane Doe. Name Explain was founded on the basis that everything has a name, and we've even given a name to those with a name we don't know, John or Jane Doe. I'm sure you've heard this name before, it's used in all manner of ways. Someone has given this name when they're on the run and the police don't know their actual name, when a body is found and no one is able to identify it, or simply when someone wants to remain anonymous. It's safe to say that you most likely don't want to end up with the title of John or Jane Doe attached to yourself. But how did these names become linked to those without a name? The odd thing about this is the origins aren't actually as morbid as the name is linked to being now. To start with, the name wasn't used for unknown criminals or dead bodies, but rather for fictional people in old English court cases. And I mean really old English. In fact, this name dates back to over 800 years ago, with the signing of the Magna Carta in 1215. This charter came into existence due to the monarch of England at the time, King John, abusing his power and genuinely being considered one of the worst kings in British history, doing things like imprisoning his own wife and starving to people death in his castle. He also imposed heavy taxes on his barons, and if they didn't pay, he would seize their property. This created a breaking point and the barons seized London and forced King John to negotiate with them, formalising the Magna Carta. The Magna Carta has helped shape law not just in Britain but around the world to this very day. Most noticeably, it shaped legal procedures when it came to crime. The famous quote from the charter being, no free man shall be taken, or imprisoned, or outlawed, or exiled, or in any way harmed, nor will we go upon him, nor will we send upon him, except by the legal judgement of his peers or by the law of the land. And part of this included having to have two witnesses for any legal action. However, for the witnesses' protection, they would have to use fictional names. However, these fake names have to be used more often in other legal matters, especially more delicate ones, most prominently in legal disputes between landlords and tenants. I read that as an old English landlord, trying to get a squatter or tenant not paying their rent out of your property included a lot of technical legal action and rigmarole, so it was just easier to bring something called an action of ejectment on behalf of a fictitious tenant against another fictitious person who had allegedly evicted them. I'll be honest, I'm no legal expert, so why this was easier I have no idea. If you happen to be a lawyer from the Middle Ages, or ideally both, please chime in. Nevertheless, between these landlord-tenant disputes and unnamed witnesses, two fictitious names came into popularity, and these were John Doe and Richard Rowe. In landlord-tenant legal disputes, the tenant, aka the plaintiff, was usually given the title of John Doe, or the landlord, aka the defendant, would be Richard Rowe. As John Doe was the name given to the person supposedly in the wrong, this might explain to us why the name still carries a negative connotation, and why it is used for people in the wrong, like unnamed suspects in crime. And of course, being dead and unknown is pretty negative too. So while this may be how these names came about, why exactly were the names of John Doe and Richard Rowe chosen? Well we simply don't know the exact reasoning behind these names, that's been lost to the history books. We don't know if they were named after any real people, and we don't have a source for the first time the names were used. But that doesn't mean we can't speculate on the matter, it's thought this name may come from familiarity and popularity. John and Richard have always been incredibly popular names in the UK, so I imagine this was no different. John and Richard would have been names known by almost everyone across the land, so it was just easy to use these well-established names. Though, what about those surnames of Doe and Roe? Well, there's actually more that links them together than just their use together and the fact they rhyme. These names appear together somewhere else in language, and that is with deers. A doe is the name for a female deer, and a roe is the name for a species of deer found all across Europe, including Britain. Deers are still somewhat common across the land, though you may have to head to the woods or other parts of remote nature to spot them. Though I imagine that in Britain in the Middle Ages, deers would have been way more commonplace. In fact, I read of medieval deer parks, where deers were very well cared for, and of course farmed for their meat and hunted for sport. So it's safe to say deers would have been incredibly commonplace in medieval Britain. So like with the names John and Richard, using the deer names of Doe and Roe too would have been understood by all. I had never heard the fake name of Richard Rowe before I started writing this video, and while it doesn't seem to be as popular, it has been used in more recent times. I read that if there are two suspects in a situation and both names are unknown, the name Rowe will be used instead, and it was prominent in the Roe vs Wade case in the USA in 1973, where Norma McCorvey used the pseudonym of Jane Rowe. 
And that brings us nicely to the female version of the name John Doe, Jane Doe. This name of John Doe stretched out from being just used in the court of law for grumpy landlords to being used across the globe to refer to people whose names are not known of. And of course, when it became applicable to actual people and not just fake courtroom people, it meant that women could be classed as a John Doe too. However, we have the issue here that John is traditionally seen as a men's name, so calling an unknown woman John seems a bit odd, so the name Jane Doe was created as a female alternative to John Doe. It's easy to see why Jane was used. John and Jane both start with J, have four letters, one syllable, and are popular and well known. So from their root in the Middle Ages to today, John and Jane Doe are used throughout the English speaking world. The FBI are perhaps the group who use the names the most. Searching through their list of wanted people bring up many John and Jane Doe's. Though John and Jane Doe aren't the only names we have like this, which are used to represent the nameless, we also have names like Joe Bloggs, Joe Schmo. John Q. Public, and even Tom Dick or Harry. However, I feel personally there's a difference between these names and John slash Jane Doe. While they could all be seen as generic placeholder names, they serve different people. We use the names John and Jane Doe when we have a specific person in mind, but we just don't know their name. While the likes of Joe Bloggs are used to simply describe no one in particular, but just a generic person. Also, why names that with Jake feature so prominently in all of this, I don't know. And of course, names like John and Jane Doe and Joe Bloggs are from the English language, but this doesn't mean this idea of a placeholder name only exists in English. This kind of placeholder name exists across many languages. While I can't go through all of them, I found the likes of the German Max and Elke Mustermann, the Danish Anders Andersen, and the French Jean de Pont. I even read the name Numerus Nagidius, which was used as a placeholder name in Latin in the Roman courts of law. Wikipedia has a great list of placeholder names from across languages. I'd really suggest checking it out and finding one you like, or even let me know what placeholder name you have in your language. And while John Doe is a placeholder name, this isn't always the case, yet we have actual people who have the name John Doe. One article I found talked about John Doe of New York City, who was born in Korea of the name Zhang Du. Wishing to fit in more at age 11, he Americanized his name to John Doe, not knowing that this name would create more confusion among people than his initial Korean name. And there were reports of many other John Doe's living in the world. Despite these coincidences, however, the name will always stick out amongst the crowd. It was created to be generic and non-descriptive, but due to all this, it has become even more popular and well-known. And the names of John and Jane Doe will always be there, for those who may unfortunately need them. A name for the nameless. Thank you to all my patrons who support Name Explain on a monthly basis. Name Explain depends on small monthly donations from fans like you to help keep the channel running. Just the small amount of $2 a month helps in a huge way, grants you patron exclusive Name Explain extras, and gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you. Hello all, thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. Stick around and check out another video and subscribe to stay up to date on all things Name Explain. You can follow myself on Twitter at NameExplainYT. Follow me there and tweet the name John at me so I know you came from this message. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.